Hey, it's Shane Ferguson, and welcome to my channel. Remember, on this channel, we're going on a journey. We are going to show you how we're currently doing our investments, how I'm building a portfolio for my two children, one of which is 21, Georgia, and Emily, who is one years old. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification because you don't want to miss out on new content every day on what's happening in our property journey. Now, this video, I'm going to talk about how you can get that deposit that little bit faster in order to get your first property. Because once you've got your first property, the good news is that property will start going up in value, giving you equity, which you're gonna be able to use in the future to secure your second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, or ninth or tenth property. So if you wanna learn about equity releases and how you can buy your second property, do go and check out the videos on my channel. I've got a ton of great content around that. But first and foremost, let's get you that first deposit. So let's look at what you can do, and here's some ideas and options for you. First is family, right? Now, not everyone has that luxury to be able to ask family, but you know what? You never know if you don't ask. Maybe you've got parents, grandparents, aunties and uncles that can help you get on the property ladder. For me, I was very fortunate. My first property I bought with £3,000 and that was actually a gift from my grandfather at the time. And so if you know my background and my story, at a pretty difficult time, uh, my mum is actually an alcoholic uh, and has a lot of mental health issues and she just wasn't gonna help me. So I needed to move out at a young age. I actually moved out at 16 to rent, but 18 was when I bought my first property. So you never know who can help you. Now, I've also had times where my uncle has helped me. So when I bought an investment property, some money wasn't coming through fast enough from a remortgage. And so my uncle lent me 10,000 pounds to tide me over for a couple of months in order to get that deposit. Now, other people in your family might consider investing with you. Maybe they can have a percentage share of that property if anything went wrong. So you can give them, like, uh, you can get them a charge on the property so they will own 20%, 50% or whatever. And then when you paid them back the deposit, maybe then you get that removed. So that's a good option to have in there as well. So family is a good place to start. Now, other thing is to reduce your spending. Some people that I know, my good friend's wife, she spends 500 pounds a month on lunch at places like pret a and stuff like that. Now they're quite successful and wealthy, so they're not too fussed about it, but you could be spending a considerable amount of money too on these very expensive lunches. Maybe you've got things like Netflix, that you don't need, or maybe you go to an expensive gym and you can go to a cheaper gym. Maybe you've got Apple Music. I mean, a lot of people that I know have Apple Music and Spotify. So what I would suggest is that you go for your direct debits and just have a look at those direct debits and see which ones you could do without. Maybe you've got Sky TV and you can cut the movies out for a little while and just watch Netflix because there's tons on there, right? Maybe you could go to a cheaper gym. I don't know what it's gonna be for you, but I'm certain if you look at your expenses, there are tons of things that you can move and reduce. Maybe it's changing your mobile phone contract, getting a better deal on your gas and electric. Just take some time to do that and that will make a ton of savings. I've recently done it for myself and saved a thousand pounds a month on random direct debits and things that I didn't need, which was insane. I couldn't believe it when I saved that kind of money. I was paying uh, for subscriptions, for example, Netflix, but I get that included with my Sky. So I didn't need to be paying for that. Now, reducing spending is a good one. Now, the money that you do get, you need to put it in the right place. And you don't wanna be putting your deposit for your property into risky investments. And so what I mean by that is you don't wanna start saving 10 grand and putting it into Bitcoin, hoping the price is gonna go up and get you back 50 grand. Because if you've seen those crypto coins, they're great, they can make you a lot of money, but they can also lose you a lot of money. You can lose your money in a day. It happens in minutes sometimes. So what you should be looking at is something called an index fund or an index tracker. And what that does is it buys the FTSE 100, for example, or you can use 
the American indexes, but why not just use the FTSE 100? And it buys an equal amount of shares every single month in that fund. Now, on average, that goes up around 10% a year, which is better than just leaving the money in your bank. Right? If you lose your, leave your money in your bank today, you'd be, you won't even get 1% interest. And inflation is more than 5% at the time of recording this. So you're actually losing money every single month. So put your money that you're saving into an index tracker or an index fund. There are tons of them. Your bank might offer one, uh, but you could look at Hargreaves Lansdowne. There's tons. If you just Google index tracker and you can set up a regular payment to go in there every month, 100, 500, 1,000. I don't know what your circumstances are. And then what you do know is on average every year, you're going to make 10% on that. And that will also compound and that will really start to make that deposit move and get your money working because that's what we're looking to do here. So an index fund is a good thing to do. Now, you could also earn extra, right? Now, how could you do that? Now, easily, I know most people watching this video could make a thousand pounds in the next seven days selling stuff on eBay that they don't want right, that they don't want. I've done this. Last year in lockdown, we were locked in, bored. So I just put a load of stuff that I thought was junk on eBay. I sold a MacBook that was smashed, the screen was broken, and it was totally broken. And I got 400 quid. I couldn't believe it. 400 quid, and I was going to put it in the bin, right? Now, there also are some toys that I've had as a younger child that I've put on there that I thought wouldn't be worth anything that got me 50 quid for an old toy from 20 years, 30 years ago, right? And so there's loads of stuff that you might see as junk that other people absolutely love. You can sell old computer games. I mean, we went through, we sold CDs, we sold DVDs. I didn't think people listened to CDs and DVDs. They do. Some people still want those in their cars and stuff like that, or they just collect stuff. Uh, and that made me a couple of grand easily, easily. And you've got a thousand pounds, a hundred percent in your house. My daughter has recently been doing it with her clothes. She's been selling her clothes on somewhere called Depop. Um, so that's extra income. Now, other income that you could may maybe have is a side hustle, right? So my partner, Katie, she has a brownie business, right? And so she's always wanted to sell brownies and she just does it one day a week, right? So one day a week, she sells her brownies uh, and it gives her something to focus on because we've just had a new baby. Uh, she didn't want to go back to work, but she did want something to do, right? And she wanted to feel rewarded and not just be a mum all the time. And so she does that side business and that easily makes a thousand pounds a month just working one day a week. So that's quite easy to do. Maybe you could do some overtime, right? Uh, maybe at your work where you currently are, you could do some overtime and save all of that money. That's another great way to make good, good money. Um, or maybe you take a second job, right? So I used to work in recruitment. And when I was starting out to get my second deposit, I worked in recruitment in a day. And then as a Burger King manager, where I used to work, I went back there part time and did that in the evenings and the weekends, which was really, really a great way to get some extra income. And while you're young, it's easy to do. So that's a good way to get some extra income. Uh, next is look at your living arrangements, right? A lot of my friends, how they got on the property ladder was they went back and lived with mum and dad. Right. You might not want to do that, but it works for some people. One of my business clients at the moment, she's uh, looking to sell her house and wants to get some more options for the next deal that she buys. And she wants to be in a good position. So she's going to stay with one of her family members. Right. And you could do the same too. start looking at options or maybe your living arrangements allow you to maybe where you live now, rent out a room. Right. So if you've got a spare room rent it out on Airbnb from time to time, or rent it out to a lodger. And that's pretty much pure profit. In fact, you're allowed a lodger and you don't have to pay tax on that, which is pretty crazy, right? So these are some good ways to get some. If you've got some others that uh, I've missed off here, comment below and let me know. Or any questions you've got, comment below as well. Can you do me a favor, quickly smash that like button. Go on, do it now, smash the like button over there. 
And if you didn't earlier, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification. In fact, tonight I'm going up all the way to Doncaster tonight where we've just secured a property at auction about two weeks ago with my daughter Georgia and I'm actually going to be making a ton of new content there that you can follow along and see all about. I'll do a little property tour and stuff like that so if you don't subscribe you won't see that but we bought that property for 60 grand. It's worth a hundred right. You want to know how this stuff works make sure you subscribe. So we're going to show you all of that. We're going to show you how the refurb works, how we get the builders, all that important stuff. So join us on the journey, subscribe and hit the bell. And any questions or comments, do put those below as well. Thanks for watching. I'm James Nicholson. Stay blessed and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Bye for now.